So now, now, now I'm sure you can see where I get the analogy of the hot dog and the bun from. Um, so again, sigma sp hybridized with another carbon that was also sp hybridized. So here, here's that, here's that, the two lobes from the hybridized, and here's the other two lobes of the other carbon, which is also sp hybridized. And here are the hydrogens, right? Triple bond. There you go. So, so here's another, um, I just wanted to mention this, this is just an application of, of valence bond theory. This is your everyday life now, okay? Really cool stuff. Um, why, why is pi bonding important? Like, you know, we have sigma bonds and pi bonds. <coughs> so we have uh, compounds that ref are referred to as cis and trans. Can you think of an example in your daily life when you hear the word cis and trans? Gender? <laughs> We're not going to go that way. <laughs> Can you think of food though, right? Trans, cis and trans fat? Okay, cis, cis fats. <clears throat> cis fats typically are um, with oils and things like that, and trans fat tend to be more solidified. Um, these are cis and trans isomers of, of dichloroethane, and you can see how uh, you've got a double bond in both of them, so you got one pi bond in both of these. These two compounds are completely different compounds because of that pi bond in the center. You cannot rotate that double bond to make these two the same. Like I can't turn this upside down and make that because of the pi bond in that double bond. So, um, and then, you know, the, the cis, by the way, which one of these two is more polar? The cis or the trans? Yeah. Yeah, the cis is more polar because the chlorines are now on one side of the molecule. They're, they're, they're outweighing the hydrogens on top. Um, and then here, here's a nice picture illustrating why you cannot rotate a double bond or a triple bond. Um, so again, here's, here's the cis dichloroethene, and here's that pi bond. In order to rotate that bond, you've got to break these guys. And that takes a good amount of energy to do that. And so as a result, um, you've got molecules that are permanently stuck in either a cis conformation or a trans conformation. That's why you have cis and trans fats. Um, physiologically speaking, you also have cis and trans fats in phospholipid bilayers of cells. Okay, So you might remember, um, if you look at a picture of a phospholipid bilayer, you got the little ball there for the phosphate group, and you got two little legs coming out, like the dude with the, the kink leg. You know? <laughs> Like that. You know what I'm talking about though, right? Oh, I hope you know what I'm talking about. Go into, go into a bio, bio textbook, you know, and you'll see a fossil with bilayer. You get the head with two legs. Oh, yeah. Right? And then on the other bottom part, you get another head with another two legs, and the two legs are facing each other. Fossil with bilayer. Well, you'll notice that the legs sometimes have kinks in them. Those refer to the cis uh, fats that are tails of the phos phosphate groups. And what that does is it, it creates a, a phospholipid bilayer that's a little more flexible, that isn't so rigid, so it can take, uh, so it can adjust to changes in osmotic pressure across membranes and things like that. So physiologically speaking, cis and trans uh, fats or cis and trans molecules in general also play a really important physiological role um, in cell structure. You know, so <clears throat> if you're into biology, that's that's a that's a really cool concept. <clears throat> Has anyone ever heard that bio before? Maybe bio 170 or bio 101. Um, they may talk about cis and trans. Maybe not. They may not emphasize on it at least. All right. So we'll stop there, and then we'll practice some more. <laughs>